Wow. No applause for me today. Okay. That's fine. Well, in case you haven't yet, please follow me on my Pinterest. I appreciate that very much. Morning, Grace Christian University. Here are the announcements today. But before I give those, I want to give a nice welcome to those joining us online. Please put in the comments below. How are you doing today? We'd love to hear from you. Okay. Some information for this week. Tomorrow is March for Life. Yes. Yeah. So if you want to head out to that, uh, Pam and Jess Payne will have, sorry, Dr. Pam Schurstad, Jessica <laughs> Payne will have a sign up at the back of chapel after, after chapel is done. If you would like to go tomorrow, transportation leaves at 940 and you'll return at 2 o'clock. There's going to be lunch and a chapel scan provided. For those who can't make it tomorrow, we are going to be praying for the persecuted church here at regular chapel time. Internship and career fair. Yeah. Internships. Very exciting. That's this Thursday at 9.30 to 12.30 p.m. So if you are in need of an internship or you're looking for a job, this is a great place to be. Drop in during that time. There will be at least 15 organizations represented. Okay, this Thursday, you saw it on the screen. It's Temple Workout. Who's excited for that? This week, it's with Pound Fitness. Pound Fitness incorporates drumming and rhythm into exercise for a very high intensity calorie burning workout. You won't want to miss it. You can sign up via email. If you RSVP, you will receive a free post-workout smoothie. This Friday is a pickleball tournament. <laughs> hey, I, I'm getting to that. So pickleball tournament is this, 12, uh, this Friday at 12.30 in the gym. You can sign up on gracetigers.com forward slash intramurals. And for more information, you can email Brooke Nguyen. Friendsgiving is this Monday at 5.30. Who's excited for that? Yes. Friendsgiving is going to be at North, in the North Dining Hall at 5.30. There will be male, female-specific meal types, but you can eat from both. For more information, you can talk to Kirsten Nolan. That's the information I saw. For more information, you can clarify with Kirsten. Sign up for Zach Kahala. She's laughing. Commuter Fish Bowl event is next Tuesday at 12.20 in the President's Room during lunch. For more information, you can speak to Stephanie Zalas. It'd be a great time. Scholarships. Who likes scholarship? So the other day, you would have received an email on a few different scholarship opportunities we have for you to apply for. Applications for that go until November 11th at 10 o'clock. So make sure you get your application in. Man, my tremors are bad today, aren't they? <laughs> also, basketball tomorrow, we have JV and varsity playing here at home. Woo! We're going to be playing the Cornerstone Golden Eagles, and that will be at 5 o'clock for JV, and varsity will be at 7 against the Trinity Christian Trolls. So what are we going to do to the Golden Eagles and the Trolls? We're going to... Great. Okay. That's all I have. Good morning. We're so happy to be here. My name's Daniel. I'm one of the pastors at Chapel Point in Hudsonville and this is Aaron, Kimberly, and Rob. We're all uh, part of the worship team there. And we're just, uh, we wanted to say thank you for inviting us here uh, today. And we're happy to be here. And I wanted to read from you uh, just a couple verses from Ephesians about this, uh, the song that we're going to sing. If you would, would you stand up with us, please, as I read this? Uh, this song is called Oh But God. And it has been a, good, a great song for our church to sing. And uh, just a great way for us to remember uh, the good news of Jesus Christ as we sing together. And it sings about where God has, where we were and where God has taken us to. Uh, just like in Ephesians 2 when it says that you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you were once walked according, following the course of this world, uh, following the prince of the power of the air, 
the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom all we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. And here's the, the beautiful exchange in this, and the change in the story. It says, but God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. It's the beautiful grace of Christ that we uh, can gather, we can rejoice together. And so I just invite you to sing along with us as we sing, Oh, but God. I was buried beneath my rebellion, lost without hope of redemption, blind to my need for a savior, oh but God, crushed by the weight of my failures, living the lie I created. Digging my grave without knowing, oh, but God, oh, but God, rich in mercy, how you love me, too much to let me stay lost, my salvation sent from heaven, nailing my sin to a cross, oh, I traded my chains for your freedom You were the one that I needed Oh, my God Resurrected my heart from the ruins And my rescue came through like the morning Now this is my short testimony Oh, my God Oh, my God
when we didn't deserve it. We never deserved it, God, but we thank you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy in Jesus Christ. It's because of him that we are here today. Open our eyes, open our ears uh, to see more of you, to know you more, and to run hard after you, Lord. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Grace, I would like to introduce Joel Wayne. Why don't you come on up? He is one of the pastors at Chapel Point in Hudsonville, Michigan, right down the road. He is a faithful man of God. He loves his word. He loves his wife, Melissa. He loves his four kids, the church with a capital C, and also the local church. I also wanted to take a minute to introduce Eric Palmer. He is our college and young adult pastor. He is here today and would love to chat with any of you um, about the ministries that he's involved in at Chapel Point, and also he'll be here on Thursday as part of the internship fair, so connect with him as well when you have a chance. Let me pray for you a second. God, be welcome in this place. Be present here over Joel as he shares a message. May his words be from his heart. May they be informed by the Holy Spirit, God. Bless this time, transform our hearts, and make us more like you through the words we hear. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, good day. Good morning. It's good to be with you. Uh, I was able to be here a couple of years ago, and then even a couple of weeks back, I was here for some stuff, and it's always good to be here on campus with you. Um, I Hopefully, you already know a little bit of this right now. Um, you have the Old Testament, and you have the what in the Bible. New Testament. We're going to do some class participation today. I hope you're game with that. Um, and you had the first five books of the Bible, which are called the Pentateuch or the Torah, the Law of Moses. What are they? Ready, set, go. Perfect. I think I heard any Ephesians in there. You're wrong, but God loves you too. All right? Um, so here, um, the word Torah is translated as what? Law. Everybody say law. law. All right, so there's the Torah. God gives us his law in order to help us line up. And literally, one of the ways that you can think about law is this. From the Hebrew root word, it actually means that teaching, that instruction to do what? To hit the mark. That's why I have an arrow. Anybody hunters? Who's hunting? I don't. I, I think it's a cool kind of thing. I just don't. I go to, I go to Meyer. Um, <laughs> But it's a, it's a cool thing. So literally, when you look at instruction or the law, if you look at the word of God, it is giving you a direction to aim for, and it's allowing you to hit the mark. That's what you want to do. God is giving you his inspired word. He's giving you his truth, his promises. It is, it is all truth, 100% of it. We preach the entire word of God. We don't add to it. We don't remove from it. And it allows us to hit the mark. The root word for sin literally means to miss the mark. So now all of a sudden, either you're hitting the mark or you're missing the mark. And so when I think about that, I I think so many people, and by the way, I know there are so many stereotypes about college students. Did you know that? There are so many stereotypes about college students and about young adults. Let me tell you this right now. I believe that God is raising up young people today to do a mighty move of God. So regardless of what you may hear, Just listen to the word and his promises. And recognize that God has called you to something. And what we want to know is what is it that God has called you to? What what has God called you to? And what instruction has he given to you that allows you to hit that mark, to hit that target? And not to to actually aim at something differently. You know, one of the things is... As Pastor Rick and I are able to get to know each other, I, I love it because this guy just makes me better. Uh, if you don't know him, get to know him better because we get to sharpen each other a little bit and encourage each other. And as we are able to have conversation, one of the things that we always end up talking about naturally is what is the call of God in your life? And are you living? Are you trying to hit that mark with a tenacity? Uh, what, what we would often say is a spiritual grit or a spiritual fortitude that is so deep in you, you know you have to do that. You see, another word for that is this thing called conviction. Everybody say conviction. Conviction. It's something so deep in your soul that you know you have to run after that no matter what. 
It's something so deep that like nothing's going to get in your way, and you're going to drive toward that. That's what it is to be someone who has tenacious faith, a, a tenacious lifestyle that is pushing toward God. Now, I will tell you, I don't care what generation you're a part of, I think that's something that we miss today. I think we're missing too, many, too few people, we have way too few people who are really living with a deep conviction that hits the mark in terms of giving God's glory at all times. We don't have it. I, I will tell you that the greatest missing entity in the church today is actually spiritual leadership. Listen, we have how many worship teams? Like amazing four or five of them every Sunday, different places doing their thing. Awesome people. We have great music. You can have great, great equipment and lights, and you can have all this stuff. Guys, what we need is the Word of God and people living so convicted by His truth that no matter what comes their way, they will plow through it for the sake of the kingdom. What would it look like for a bunch of young people to adopt that mentality together? I'm not even saying that you don't already have that mentality. Some of you do, man. You pick it up and you're like, I'm going to hit the ground and nothing's going to keep me from doing this. Right? It's it's no different. You can use, just like Paul did, you can use all types of illustrations to think about this and metaphors and everything else. I remember when I decided to train for half marathons and then marathons. And when when you're training for that kind of stuff, and when I was training for my first marathon, I lived in Connecticut and it was in the winter. Don't ever sign up for a marathon in April when you live in the north because that means you're training in the dead of winters. I remember sometimes I would literally get on a treadmill for three hours at a time and you would just sweat, sweat, sweat. So I'd take four shirts with me. This is tenacity. I would take four shirts with me, place them on the rail right beside me. Every 40, 45 minutes, I'd have to change shirts because I was just so wet, right? So there I am, take my shirt off, put another shirt, and you just go. And it was absolutely miserable, but I really wanted to run that race. I'm curious if that's the posture we have when it comes to representing Jesus Christ. Like, is that our mentality? Tenacious faith, this tenacious living that we have with Jesus Christ to go, I'm going I'm to give myself to something so great that I'll do that every morning at 530. I'm willing to go to bed earlier so that I can get up on time so I can have enough time to go run for two and a half hours on a treadmill. And I'm curious, are we still, are we living that way? Did you know that you are a child of God? You're a son or a daughter of the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And as a result of that, he has something that he has ingrained in your heart. What are you willing to do to discover that and then live so boldly for it that the world around you shifts to give greater glory to the Almighty? I mean, it's just that simple, guys. One of the questions I also would even ask is, do you know what that call is? Here's what I think, I'm going to give you a definition of tenacious faith. Tenacious faith. Like that person that you respect, you're just like, man, they are just sold out for the kingdom. I don't even know if I like everything they do, but I respect them so much. If you're in love of Jesus, trust me, there are going to be a lot of people who don't like what you do. So I'm not, I don't live a life in order to be liked, but I do want to live a life that can be respected because I'm true to the word. Here's tenacious faith, is taking the responsibility to fulfill that which God has called you to. Now, taking the responsibility are big words, but you go, man, I know God has called me to this, and I'm going to take the responsibility of that And I'm actually going to do everything I can to live that very thing out that God has called me to. I'll give you a reminder of a passage here. Acts 20, 24. Be a fun one for you to write down if you want to. I consider my life worth nothing to me if only I make, if only if I may finish the race and complete the task of the Lord Jesus has given to me, right? This is Paul writing these words. And as he's writing these very words, he knew, here, here's Paul's life, right? He was setting aside his own personal agenda. We know his agenda was to, to just crucify every, every Christian there was. And then on the road to Damascus, Acts 9, he gave his life to Jesus Christ. Paul took God's call, though, and his vision, and he picked it up, that responsibility, and he took it to his death in 66, 67 AD uh, AD when he ended up being beheaded by the emperor of Rome. 
Would we call that tenacious faith? What would that look like for us? One of the things that if you want to live by tenacious faith, I'll go ahead and tell you right now that here's one thing you find in every single illustration, every single story that we have in the Word of God is they, they all end up having to sacrifice their own personal agenda for something greater. Proverbs 19, 23, uh, 20 through 23. Proverbs 19. And I know you guys are walking through some different Proverbs this year. And as you're doing that, I would encourage you. I'll just go ahead and challenge you. I go through seasons. I'm not doing it right now, but throughout my life, I've gone through seasons. And maybe you've heard this before. You just read the proverb that lines up to the day. There's, how many Proverbs are there? Anybody know? 31. So you're going to have a few months. You don't hit the latter one. Uh, February is going to really mess you up. But go ahead and just read it every day. It's part of the wisdom lit. You know, you're just going to really learn from it, glean from it. It tells you all about leadership. This is what it says. Uh, Proverbs 19, 20 through 23. It says, listen to advice and accept instruction. If you want to live by tenacious faith, I think this is a passage that's going to help you live by tenacious faith. It's not glamorous. It's not all glitzy, but man, it's going to let you be grounded in truth. It says, listen to advice and accept instruction. Are you teachable? That's another way of saying it. Be teachable. That you may gain wisdom in the future. Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. So you better make sure. I'll even unpack this further. It says, many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Some of us have a desire, but your prayer should be that your desire lines up with the will of God. Like a lot of us know what we prefer, what we'd like, but as a, as a believer in Jesus Christ, we have the responsibility of then saying, wait, does this line up with the will of God? Right? I am certain that the followers of Jesus Christ, right? Do we, do we think that the people of the Bible are worth emulating? Yes or no? Do we think that the people of the word of God are worth emulating? Yes or no? Yes. Say it again, because I don't think about half, you got some work to do, buddy, because I think about two thirds of them aren't quite sure. Right? So I look at it and say, wait, if we think that the people of the Word of God are worth emulating, how many of them heard from God and go, that's going to be fun? <laughs> I want it to sit on you. Listen to advice, accept instruction. You've got to be humble. You better know who you're wanting to learn from, that you may gain wisdom, right? Because the plans in the mind of man, uh, there, there's a lot of them, but it's the purpose of the Lord that's going to stand. It says, what is desired in a man is steadfast love, and a poor man is better than a liar. It means you're, so, you mean, you're just a person of integrity. The character wins the day. The fear of the Lord leads to life. And whoever has it rest satisfied, he will not be visited by harm. I start thinking about these types of passages in the book of Proverbs, and there's many. There's a dozen very similar to this that all communicate this. Man, if you really want to be somebody with a tenacious faith, then you're going to be willing to, to go to people who you see as mature leaders. You're going to want to learn from them. You're going to want to grow from them. You're going to want to ask them questions. You're going to be somebody who has ears to hear. You're going to have somebody who you ensure that your plans line up with the desires of God. You know, somebody uh, used to always walk around uh, me and they would all be like, well, Joel, what do you want to do next? What's going on next? And I'm like, can I just ask you to stop asking me that? I'd rather you challenge me by saying, do you know what God has for you next? Do you see the difference in the question? Biggest four-letter word we have out there right now is self. So maybe a better way to think about this is this. What, what causes us, what keeps us from living with a tenacious faith toward Jesus Christ? 
Or sometimes you have to know what keeps you from it. I, I'm, I'm an advocate of knowing your weaknesses as well as you know your strength, if not even better. What I do is I, I identify my weaknesses and you're like, oh, that's a fun day. It is a fun day. Because you recognize, hey, I do have some strengths, but I also have some weaknesses. And so I hire my weaknesses. Right? A lot of these guys over here who work with me, they fulfill the weaknesses that I have in my life. And as a result, the ministry is far greater. If I did their job, our church would only be six people because that's how many people are in my family. You don't want me leading worship. You hire your weaknesses. Here are some things that keep us from living with a tenacious faith. One, pride. That's why he just said, what? Listen to advice and accept instruction. It's actually hard to listen to advice and accept, in accept instruction, isn't it? But we always say at our church, mature leaders invite what, guys? Accountability. Accountability. I did not plan that. <laughs> that would be our entire church, trust me. Mature leaders invite accountability. And so here he is, listen to advice, accept instruction. And so one of the things that keeps us from living with tenacious faith is pride. And it's a, pride is an overly high opinion of self. And yet we know that scripture also says, do not think more highly of yourself than you ought to. I know we often can wake up and we're so concerned about the things that we even put on and we wear because we're like, What's some, what are they going to think about what I'm wearing today? Can I tell you good news? Most people aren't thinking about you <laughs> because they're so concerned thinking about themselves. You're so worried about what this person's going to think about whether or not do you wear the new like white jean things or skinny jeans or whatever. Do you mess your hair up or not mess your hair up? And like, how are you going to look and how are you going to be seen? Most people aren't thinking about you, friends. They're not. But pride is this opinion, this overly high opinion of ourself. And it's a, it, in a way to think about it is it's exaggerated self-esteem. It's exaggerated haughtiness or arrogance. Pride is what causes us to promote self rather than Jesus. Pride causes us to promote self rather than Jesus. Pride has a twin sister. Pride's twin sister is insecurity. <coughs> People who are prideful and always got to be like, look at me, it's just because they're insecure. Keeps us from what keeps us from living a tenacious faith? I'm going to give you another one. Fear. I think we're more scared today than we know. Not just your generation, every generation. By the way, it's the most powerful selling technique that there is. Create a fear in you of missing out on something, and then you'll do everything you can to go purchase it. It's called marketing. Fear is shown by hiding behind your position. It's, it's fear shown by not only hiding behind your position, but intimidating others. Another thing that keeps us from living a tenacious faith, distraction. We get distracted. Any of you gotten distracted before? We know that God's called us to something and we end up, we start, uh, we start saying yes to things that really pull us away from the call of God. I see organizations that do this constantly. I see churches that do it constantly, universities that do it constantly. Hey, we know that we're called to do this and this. And then I'm like, then why are you doing this? Because it doesn't line up. Well, a few people, no, 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 we're not trying to hit a few people. We're trying to hit the masses with the goodness of God. You're getting, you get distracted. We do it the same way when we go, man, I know God has called me to do this, to serve the bride of Christ. Maybe some of you are called to ministry. I want to serve the bride of Christ however I can. And so you have opportunities for internships and residencies, but then you have a buddy of yours says, hey, my dad, he's got an opening in his job. It's going to be great. It's, it's down in Florida. You can come do that for the summer. We can go to the beach every afternoon. Sounds like fun, right? But what you may not recognize is maybe that was fun, but you just got distracted when you could have gone to a ministry and been, and been groomed and matured to be ready to serve the bride, but you just really wanted a suntan, which nobody else really cares whether or not you have a suntan. You see where I'm going, right? We get distracted. 
Are any of you distracted right now? Are any of you distracted? Another thing that keeps us from living with tenacious faith. This is just deep in me right now. I have four kids, and I speak a lot with them about do they really trust the Lord? I think we have a lack of trust today. I think we have an environment where nobody's trusted. My church often hears from me, I don't, I don't care what news outlet it is, I don't trust them. Everybody's painting their own narrative, it seems, no matter who it is. And so I look at probably five or six, and I try to pray about, God, what's truth and what's not true, so I can have a clear understanding. But I think we have a lack of trust, and I think we have a lack of trust in God. But will he really provide for me if I say yes to this? Yeah, he will. It may not be the way you want to be provided for, but he'll provide for you. Had a good friend of mine. He actually just left today. He came into town. He, he works all over the nation and all over the world, really, in different offices. And he, uh, probably 15 years ago, we were, became really, really good friends. And it's when I pastored a church in which I was, um, they believed that their responsibility was to keep the pastor humble by keeping them as poor as possible. Right? Maybe if you've been, been in ministry before, your family has been, you understand what I'm saying. Um, I made so little money, like going to, literally, I remember my first Christmas at this church I was serving. We could not, my wife and I, with our, we had one kid at the time, we could not go to Subway for Christmas Eve dinner because we only had four and a half bucks in the bank. I'm pastoring a church outside New York City in one of the wealthiest zip codes in the nation, and they paid me so poorly as they, th- they thought that was a responsibility. And so what I end up seeing is I stopped even. I would tell you, I, I don't know if I really trusted the Lord at times because I was like, man, is he going to really provide? Well, God started providing. And you had to pay to send your kids to preschool there. There was no public preschool. That was way too much money. It was literally a third of my salary, the cheapest one. And so I was like, how am I going to do this? Well, somebody came and they just said, hey, I, just, I don't even know who it is. They said, we're going to pay for your kids to preschool. And I was talking to my buddy Blake about it. I was like, man, I just need, I need the church to pay me like enough to at least survive. He goes, whoa, did God promise to provide? I said, yes. He says, did he provide? I said, yes. Well, fine. He just didn't provide the way you wanted him to provide. What's your problem? No, it wasn't funny. I felt that one. Do we really trust God? Do we really trust God to, to, for him to provide for us when we start living with a tenacity and a spiritual grit that other people go, what's going on in your life? The believer is not called to blend in. The believer is called to stand out, but not for self, but for Jesus. I've got two verses I want to read for you. And then I'm going to close this a little different day. We're going to close with the chorus. Can we close with the chorus? Can you guys come on up? Thanks, guys. Because I'm just trying to stir something in you. I'm trying to stir for you to go, uh, enough in you to go have conversations after this. That's all I'm trying to do. I want you to go have conversations after this and go, what's God calling you to? Are you living with tenacious faith? Friends, here's Galatians 5.17. Now, Galatians 5.17, amazing, amazing chapter. Walk by the flesh, not, uh, walk by the spirit, not by the flesh. But he says, the desires of the flesh, your desires are actually against the spirit. And the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. Meaning, the, the reason this is hard is because often what God wants is not what we want. Because we're all about self-preservation and we're all about self and I, I would say protection and trying to make sure that we're always getting what we desire. And sometimes that doesn't line up with the will of God. And so here he says, the desires of the flesh, they're against the spirit. And the desires of the spirit, they're against the flesh. They're opposed to each other. But we also know the encouraging part of that, that's Galatians chapter 5, 17. It's actually somewhat encouraging because the verse before that in Galatians 5, 16 tells us that he will enable us to walk by the spirit. And we no longer have to gratify the desires of the flesh. It's letting us know we can do this. 
We can do this. God is calling you to more than you know. Will you at least walk out of this place and go, what is that? God is calling you to do more. That doesn't mean it's not, this isn't part of it, but he's calling you more than just to get a degree. He's calling you to represent the king. What are you willing to do about it? So I I just, Christ be magnified, right? Is that where we're going to go? It's a great song if you don't know it. Let's just sing this chorus together. And the way I'd like to conclude is I'm going to invite you, uh, just can we just stand? And I want you to listen to part of this. He'll invite you to sing maybe partway through. And then I'll close us in prayer. Christ be magnified, let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified. every single person who is hearing this today that they would explore all that you are calling them to that they would have the awareness of maybe what's serving as a distraction in their life that's keeping them from pushing toward you may they know the difference between their desire and your desire your will the call of God in their life may they have the maturity to go and at least ask the question Thank you for allowing us to be a child of the King. In Christ's name, amen. Have a good day. Take care.